Let's talk today about dominant strategies. You have a dominant strategy if you always want to play that strategy regardless of the, what the other person does. B in this game is a dominant strategy. Let's see why. If X is played, you're better off with B than A because 15 is greater than 10. And if Y is played, you're better off with B than with A because 9 is greater than 6. So since player 2 can only play X or Y, if you're better off with B if he plays X, and if you're better off with B if he plays Y, B is a dominant strategy. Now, notice this 10 is bigger than this 9. That doesn't preclude B from being a dominant strategy because player 1 never had the choice between the 10 or the 9, right? If X is played, well, it's 15 versus 10, and if Y is played, it's 9 versus 6. These, the difference between these two is, is irrelevant. If you have a dominant strategy, you always want to do it, regardless of what the other person does. That means you don't even need to look at what the other person's payoffs are. The other person's payoffs are irrelevant for determining if B is a dominant strategy, which is why I didn't bother to fill in those four numbers. No matter what numbers I could fill in, B would still be a dominant strategy. All right, let's go to another game. This game has no dominant strategy. That's because if X is played, you get the same payoff from A as you do from B. If it's a dominant strategy, it must mean that you always get a higher payoff from doing it. Ties don't count. So let's say somehow I filled in the payoffs and I knew that player two would pick Y. Well, that would mean I would want to pick B over A but that still wouldn't make B a dominant strategy. A dominant strategy, by definition, is a strategy that gives you a higher payoff regardless of what the other person does. Even if that other person is crazy, even if they're out to hurt you, even if they're out to help you. So, and it has to be strictly greater, meaning B, in this example, is not a dominant strategy. If I change this to make this a bit smaller than 10, B would then, of course, become a dominant strategy. Now let's look at dominant strategies from the viewpoint of player two. In this game, X is the dominant strategy. If A is played, player two does better with X compared to Y. And if B is played, player two does better with X compared to Y. So player two is always better off playing X over Y. So that makes X dominant strategy. Again, I didn't bother filling in the payoffs for player one because they're irrelevant for determining whether player two has a dominant strategy. Now we go to a game where the players have a few more choices. And in this game, F is the dominant strategy. Let's see why. If W is played, you get a higher payoff from F than you do from E, G, or H. If X is played, you also get a higher payoff from F compared to E, G, and H. And finally, if Y is played, you get a higher payoff from F compared to E, G, and H. So F always gives you a higher payoff no matter what the other person does. That means player one, player one's rational, player one will always play F, regardless of what you could fill in for player two and regardless of whether or not player two is rational. In this game, we look at stupid strategies. Now, most of the game theory world doesn't use the word stupid, it uses dominated. So, but I get, when I lecture, I get confused between dominant and dominated, and they both start with D, so when you abbreviate, it's kind of annoying. So, when I talk about, um, instead of talking about dominated strategies, I talk about stupid strategies, and since most of the people who watch this video will probably be my game theory students, I'm gonna stick with stupid. A dominant strategy exists if that strategy is better than everything else. In contrast, a strategy is stupid if only one other thing always beats it. The reason for the asymmetry in the definition is because we, we want to say a rational person will always play a dominant strategy and to always do something that has to be the best. We want to say that a rational person will never play a stupid strategy. But to not play a stupid strategy, that means only one other thing has to consistently beat it. 
For you to know you never want to do something, all you need to know is one thing would be better than that. For you to know you always wanted to do something, that one thing would have to be everything else. Let's see why f is stupid. Well, if w is played, f gives a lower payoff than e. If x is played, f gives a lower payoff than e. And if y is played, f gives a lower payoff than e. So you never want to play f because no matter what player 2 does, you always want, you'd always be better off with e than with f. That doesn't mean you want to play e, right? If x is played, you definitely don't want to play e. But you never ever want to play f. No matter what numbers you could put in for player 2, you'd always be better off with e than with f. Let's see why h is stupid. Well, if w is played, everything beats h. If x is played, g beats h. And if y is played, everything beats h. This means h is stupid because g always beats it. So you never want to play h because you'd always be better off with g. Doesn't mean you're going to necessarily play g. If for some reason you predict w is going to be played, you're not going with g, you're going to want to go with e. But you certainly won't go with h. Now if we took g away, h would no longer be a stupid strategy because there'd be no other strategy that always beats it. You know, specifically, if x is played without g, well, there's no other strategy that always beats h. Okay. Now let's look at things where I, I write down payoffs for both players. In this game, g is dominant, right? And g, again, is player one. Let's see why. w is played. Well, g, the eight here, beats the seven, the five, and the negative two. If x is played, the 8 beats the 3, the 6, and the 4. And if y is played, the 7 beats the negative 6, the 0, and the 5. So g is dominant because no matter what player 2 does, g always gives the higher payoff. So that means g is the dominant strategy. Oh, and by the way, e, f, and h have to be stupid because g always beats them. In fact, if there is a dominant strategy for a player, all the other player's strategies are stupid because... By definition, the dominant strategy always beats everything else, and if one other thing beats your strategy, your strategy is stupid. So if there's a dominant strategy, everything else is stupid. Let's look for player two. Now for player two, y is stupid. Let's see, let's examine why. If e is played, everything beats y. If f is played, x beats y. If g is played, x beats y. And if h is played, x beats y. So y is stupid because you're always better off playing x than you are playing y. But x is not a dominant strategy. See, because if e is played, you get the same payoff from e as you do from x. So x is actually what we call weakly dominant, but x is, is not a dominant strategy. So in summary, if you have a dominant strategy, that means it beats everything else, ties don't count, Rational players always play a dominant strategy. If it's a stupid strategy, or dominated, as the official game theorists would, um, game theory lexicon was ha would have it, if it's a dominated strategy, one thing always beats it, ties don't count, you never play a dominated strategy. Thank you very much.